Alrighty y'all, just a couple days before Christmas comes. You can see we have the lights up, but it is a pretty day. It's a little chilly for South Alabama. I know a lot of y'all have been colder. I've been colder, but uh, we're supposed to get a wind chill of like six degrees or nine degrees, which is the coldest that's been since the 80s here in Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. So I just wanted to say that this video is brought to you by the Bama Saltwater Tackle Shop. It's bamasaltwater.com. You can go pick up the stuff I like to use in the videos. You can go pick up hand-tied rigs, hooks, weights, lures, etc. It helps support the channel, allows you to stock up your tackle box as well. So I also want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas this weekend. Hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday. And without further ado, have a nice catch, clean, and cook for you. So how about y'all come join me and let's go do some fishing. Back out again. First cast this morning, little Jackal Rhythm Wave 2.8 inch in the Gobi color on an eighth ounce owner bullet head jig head. And I am running a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader, 2,500 size reel, 15 pound braid, and a seven foot medium bass rod. So let's get this out and see if we can bring home some fish to cook up today on this uh, gloomy cloudy day, which is actually my favorite type of weather to fish. So the fish seem to bite really well in this type of weather. Let's see if that'll hold true today. So most of the time, I'm just gonna reel it straight back to me. Every now and then I'll give it a pop and let it sink, but mostly just a straight retrieve back to you. At least we know there's plenty of bait around. Oh, and that was already a fish. I was looking at the bait and I already had something follow it back to the boat. Dang, okay. I think we might have a good day. There's one. All right. Oh, that's a nice one. Is that a trout? I think we, if we can get this landed on the boat. We have dinner. Oh. As soon as I said that. I'm gonna loosen that drag just a hair more. Dang it. Mm. There we go. Dang. I have to run a light drag so that hook don't straighten out. That's what happened to me. I just I had already lost a fish. And my hook straightened out. Come on. What are you? Something pretty good. That may be a redfish. Considering the way it hasn't come up yet, I think that's a red. But you never know. Man, I hate running light drags. But I don't want my hook to straighten out. Get me in that bush. Get out of the bush. I just want to see you, buddy. Oh yeah, nice red. That may be our redfish on the half shell that we're after. Come on. He's hooked right in the top of his mouth. Whoa, look at all the spots on him. Oh, there's three more with it. What? That's cool. There's three of them underneath it. Oh, if I can get this one up. Mm, come on. It in the net. Ah, oh, that's the hard part. Uh oh. My trolling motor's snapping on twigs. Dang. That's a, that's a good one. Mmm. Mmm. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh, and we got him. Woo! I have to play a light drag on him so I don't straighten that hook, but that's a nice redfish. Dad gum. Okay. That's a really good one. A little bigger than I thought it was. That's gonna be an overslot fish, probably. 
Look how wide it is. All right, and look at that lure in his mouth. See, this is a light jig head. Oh. Oh, wow. And it just came out. Dang, I just got bit by that joker. That actually hurt. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah, see that hook almost straightened out right there. Look at that. Look at the spots on him. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on one side. And then nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen spots on him. Man, that's a good one. He's going to make our redfish on the half shell. And I'm in a big bush, <laughs> but I'm so excited. So, and he was hungry for that lure. Let's put him in the cooler, y'all. Okay, I got to get out of these woods, but that was an awesome catch. <laughs> Man, that branch back out where it belongs. But he had three more with it, and he ended up being 25 inches. So, right on that upper slot. Perfect to blacken on the half shell. It's right here. I didn't see him until it was right on top of him. Dang. Oh, there he is. Oh, well, that's crazy. I guess I fooled him. Oh, he's going to take me into this tree. He is smart. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any free spool on that one. I mean, it's possible. I don't know. I didn't expect that. He's still there. I don't think there's any free spool in it though. There he is. Come on. Mm. That's probably gonna be a lost fish. I don't know if he's gonna come out or not. Oh, I think he did. Oh, yeah, it came out. Okay. <laughs> Man, see, all you got to do is free spool sometimes. I saw him sitting right there, and I scared him away with the boat. But I guess he was hungry enough to eat my lure. That was cool. <clears throat> okay, let's get the net on. I ain't going to be able to boat flip this one. And he's going to go back. He deserves to go back. Oh, that is a perfect slot though. Y'all, I didn't expect that one. <laughs> he was right below my trolling motor and I thought I scared him away and I just jigged a little bit and he smacked it. So I gotta get that lure out. Gotta get you one of these little D hookers. They're cheap and they work amazing. <laughs> but, but he's gonna go back. Okay, ready? There he goes. Healthy release. <laughs> that was cool. Dude, he was up in this tree branch. And I saw him, and there's a crap ton of mullet. There's little bitty fry. And then I got right on top of him before I actually saw him. And he went down. And so I just started jigging a little bit, and he smacked it. I don't know if that was the same one, but it looked like the same size. That was cool. So I free spooled it, and a lot of times those fish will get themselves unstuck. When they feel resistance, they try to go opposite of that resistance. So if you free spool it or free line it and take all the resistance off of them, they'll normally calm down and swim out. Not all the time, but a lot of times they will. Just a little tip. I brought mom with me, so made a little pit stop, picked her up, see if we can get her on some fish. I thought, there's an osprey and a heron. It does, don't it? I love being back here. You got a good one, huh? Something hit it hard. Dang. I was about to crank up and that's a nice red. Yeah, there you go. That sucker bent. This little bitty red fish bent that rod over double. <laughs> it is nice though. Want to come hold your fish? Okay, I'm happy. On mom's pink St. Croix, look at that. She, I was just about to pull up the trolling motor, and uh, there you go on artificial, huh? Yep. On that Z-Man minnows. That's the first time I've ever caught a fish on Z-Man. And wow, it's yeah, tail is beautiful. beautiful tail. Is he a keeper? Mmm, he would be on the verge, but we have that big one in the cooler, so we're gonna let him go. <laughs> wow. All righty. You're a pretty little fish. You want to go back? There you go. There you go. Hey, that Good was deal. fun. Mom just did another cast. It immediately hooked up again. 
That's another red. You, you found the redfish. There we go. <laughs> They're all 15 inches. So. <laughs> I finally figured out how yeah. to work this <laughs> That one would be a keeper. Can we please? And we want to keep them? Yes, okay. please. We'll keep it. That one is a keeper. <laughs> That was immediately after we just released the other fish and you cast right back out and got I you know. another one. <laughs> that bait just looks so good. So we'll keep this one. They only have to be 16. And uh, so mom wants to keep it as long yes, with my I big did. one. All right, making another cast. Caught two redfish back to back. That's pretty good. Is that how you're working it? Yep. They liked it. That's awesome. I finally figured out. All right, y'all. So we're going to take these redfish back home. There's the one I caught, really pretty red. And then mom caught hers just now, really fresh, lower slot red. Perfect eating sizes. So we're actually gonna do redfish on the half shell. One of my favorite ways of eating these fish. So that is awesome that we were both able to not get skunked today. The trout didn't cooperate, but hey, how can we complain about catching these beautiful fish? Oh, they're cold too. Yeah, they are. But let's go ahead and throw these in the cooler. I'm gonna see y'all back at the house to do some fish cleaning. So we have mom's lower slot redfish here and then my upper slot redfish, which he was actually right on the dock. But look at that mouth. I mean, this fish could actually fit in the mouth of this redfish if I wanted to. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and clean these really easy to get a half shelled redfish which means i'm just going to get a fillet and then we leave the skin and scales on because that's what we're going to cook it on so i'll set that one aside let's do this big baby they are tough to get through sometimes but a sharp knife helps i use this sword seven inch which i'll link down in the description below they do support the channel so real easy and then i like to flip the knife around and find that little zipper which most fish with scales have a what i call a zipper see how i'm pushing through and it's going right through those scales and everything all the way to the tail that's what i call a zipper because it's opening it up and see and then we're just going to flay it right off the bone try not to miss any meat nobody's perfect i'm not but use a seven inch flex to go right on these bones. Go over the middle spine and then go back down the other side. That's not miss a tail meat. And I like to cut it off. And then I do like to flay around the rib cage. So I'm gonna go over and around that rib cage. There we go best I can here. Boom. Now we have a pretty boneless filet and that's it. I mean we're going to cook it just like this once I clean it up. I'm leaving the skin on, leaving the scales on. Make sure you don't leave any guts in there. There will be some pin bones that you can pull out with tweezers if you want. So once you rinse it off, it should look just like that. Really nice redfish filet. And it's going to go on the grill. So I'm going to do the rest of this fish the same way on the other side. And you see, I really didn't miss that much meat. There is a nice collar here that you can take out or a redfish throat. That's very delicious. And you have that belly meat there too. But let me finish this up and then we'll get to cooking. So I have four fillets rinsed up, cleaned up, and they're ready to go. And they're going to be right here and go straight to the grill. And we'll add our seasonings while they're on the grill. So they'll never actually be inside of a building. I don't think you can get any fresher than that. But look at that beautiful colors on these. And this is going to be an outstanding meal. I'm going to grab the two big pieces first. And I've already rinsed them off with fresh water. So there's no blood or any of that on there. And we're going to go to our grill. So let's go ahead and set these redfish. The skin and scale side down on top of the fire. These are thick pieces, so they're going to take a while to cook. So I am doing them over direct heat. So we're grilling our redfish on the half shell. Now my seasoning of choice, I'm using the Chef Paul's Black and Redfish Magic just because it's tried and true and it's not too salty. So I can add salt to my taste and uh, what I like to eat. So we're going to take this up, make sure you mix it up. It's got some good flavor in there. 
really good smell mm. all right and don't be afraid to coat it redfish can take that flavor it can take seasoning all right and this is a thick fillet as well so it can definitely take some of the seasoning that's as much as i'm going to add on there since chef paul's isn't as salty as a lot of other cajun seasonings like i had mentioned before i'm just going to add a little bit of this crushed salt on there just to give it to taste so there we go boom and lastly i'd already melted some butter and i'm going to base this redfish with just this plain unsalted butter And that's going to get it the flames way up there and you can let that skin burn that's why we're doing the skins and scales down and it's not going to be flipped you want to make sure it's cooked all the way but that skin can take the heat so you can do extra virgin olive oil if you want as well but the butter works just as fine now here's the important part i'm closing the lid on it so and that heat's gonna be trapped and it should cook real thorough. I'm gonna check it in about 10 minutes and see where it's at. So it has been 10 minutes at, let's look, 325. So that's not bad. Oh, that is looking good. And my screen's foggy. See if y'all can see that better. Look at that. That is cooking up nicely. That's why I like to close the lid on them. So it keeps that flame from burning it. But you don't flip these, otherwise it's just gonna fall apart. So you want them to cook thorough. But I think another five minutes and these are gonna be done. So it's been an additional five more minutes. That is 15 minutes total cook time. Let's check them out. Oh, those smell outstanding. Man, let's touch it. I wanna make sure they're done. It don't hurt to open up the inside of it and see. No, they weren't quite done yet, so we're doing another five minutes. It's best to check them early than to let them overcook and dry out. So another five minutes, except this time uncovered, to let the air get to the coals and get some heat going through them pretty quickly. But those look absolutely amazing. Look at that. It is time to plate these fish. So total cook time was 20 minutes. 15 minutes covered and five minutes uncovered. I need a bigger spatula. Look at that though. Oh man. If that doesn't look delicious and fresh. See the skin, how it's char grilled, and that's what holds everything together without having to use a fish basket. Let's get this other one on there. Oh, these are heavy. <laughs> these are big fillets. I've been wanting some char grilled redfish on the half shell, but look how thick these fillets are. That's like a two, three inch thick fillet of redfish, y'all. Let's let this cool down and then we'll give it a taste. I also have some sliced lemon. If you like lemon or that citrus flavor on fish, you can add some, but I always leave it up to whoever wants to eat it if they want to add lemon on there or not. But I'm going to let these cool down and we're going to give these a nice delicious sampling all right these have cooled down just enough they're still pretty hot to where it's kind of hot to hold the plate but these have cooled down just enough i'm gonna try a bite look at that redfish oh man it is not dried out that's what you always want to watch out for when char grilling it's a not dry it out and that's where closing the lid helps here we go piece of delicious redfish outstanding smoky fresh fish mm. that is perfect let's get another bite here but here we go that butter the chef paul's cajun black and red fish magic that is magic right there mm. that's a phenomenal fresh tasting fish i wish y'all could try this but if you do catch your redfish or any type of fish with some thick scales like that, like sheep's head, I've done one. Redfish, black drum that are a little bit smaller. They're phenomenal. Red snapper, 
they're great on the grill like that char grill leave that skin on you don't have to be a master with the knife to get a filet like that and you'll have a meal that is very simple but delicious and fresh tasting of the awesome environment that we're in so these never went inside they stayed they went straight from the water in a cooler and then on the grill i'm gonna go share it with everybody so i appreciate y'all for watching don't forget to go check out the companies that support the bama saltwater fishing channel and get you some stuff such as this bow shield rust free so i want to thank the good lord up above for everything he does for us especially that delicious fish and we'll see you later